But let's start the shoot 'em up puzzle action game. This game is in a sequel and a standalone expansion to Bullet Heart, a game that I played and reviewed some time ago, a game that I liked very much, so I was very excited to play a new game in the system. Again, this game, it could be your entry point to the system or it can be an expansion to uh, the other one. Everything you find in Bullet Star is compatible with Bullet Heart. That simply means that the game is going to give you more heroines and more villains. The game can be played competitive when our heroines are fighting against each other or competitive when they're all fighting against a villain. Now, Precisely because the game system is exactly the same, if you're familiar with Bullet Heart, you can simply skip to the overview of the new characters later in this video, or even directly to the conclusions, but I'm gonna start the video by giving you an overview of how the game, how the game works. So in this game we have manga slash anime female heroes that are gonna fight against each other uh, dodging bouncing bullets that are coming at them and sending them to their opponents or they're gonna play comp competitively in which case there is a villain and they're dodging and bouncing uh, bullets trying to send them towards the villain each uh, each uh, hero is represented by a card such as this one plus a unique card with unique actions plus a deck of pattern cards and so each hero heroine really plays very very differently from one another and that's why later I'll give you an overview of the new or the new ones. We have a bag of tokens, again representing the bullets that are the heart of the game. They come in different colors, also identified by pattern for a color blind or color impaired players. They have numerical values between one and four, and some of them also have star symbols on them that will be used to trigger effects. And of course, when I want to share one, I can't find it only. I do, I did just find one. So we have a general bag where all the tokens are stored, then each player has a personal bag in which you play ten, place 10, that was exactly 10, you count them, 10 tokens at the beginning of the game, each player has these 10 tokens in their bag. Each player then has a set of patterns available from the personal deck, usually those patterns, there's three of them available, but then again, unique effects. The general idea is that everybody will play at the same time drawing tokens from their personal bag. A token needs to be placed in the corresponding column, so this one goes in that color, column, counting down a number of positions equal to the number that you see on that token. And so, so far, so good. Now, when you reach a position that already has a token in it, you skip it when it comes to counting. And so, for example, if I was to draw a, a red number now, say a red 2, I would count as 1, 2. So I'm trying to spread out, oof, not good, 1, 2, 3. I'm trying to spread out these bullets as much as possible because if a bullet doesn't have a spot in its own column, uh, it goes here at the bottom. So suppose I'm trying to place a red, a red 3, 1, Two, oh, three goes there, and from there it goes to this section directly. And if this section is filled up, then the character is dead. And in the competitive, in the competitive version, last girl standing wins the game. Now, each of these girls can also be used as a villain. In which case, you simply flip that board and that becomes the villain that is fighting. You also flip this other section here and when they become the, the villain or should say the boss then they have a set of pattern cards that is placed here and there will be basically patterns that need to be either matched or avoided in order to prevent negative effects that will happen. There will be a number of shield tokens placed here. And the idea is that you're trying to not die, as usual, by preventing your personal display from being uh, too busy. You're trying to not die and to send bullets to the villain. These bullets are used to crack the shields and... If the players are able to crack all the shields of the villain before everybody's dead, they win the game. But back to the competitive, again, uh, 
tokens, bullets will come to your personal display and you will use actions uh, and you have actions indicated here to manipulate and to move them around. For example, Vesta Jackson can spend an action and you'll place a token here to indicate how many she has, can spend an action to move a bullet left, right or down one space. It's very hard to pull tokens up in this game. And suppose, for example, the Vesta wants to move this token here, spending one action, and then to move this token here, spending another action. Why are we moving tokens like that? Because we're trying to match these patterns here. Those are the main way, uh, all together with personal game effects, the main ways for players to clear tokens from their personal display. For example, by taking the action I just showed you, I was able to match this pattern, which I have a pink token, two empty spaces, and then these other spaces here indicate where you can clear them. So if I can create a pink, two empty, then I can clear those two spaces. These bullets are removed. In the competitive, in the cooperative version, these are sent to the villain. In the competitive, for now, I place them next to my display because at the end of the round, all the ones that I cleared are sent to the player next to me. And then uh, the player sitting uh, on the other side will send me the ones that they cleared. Plus a number of extra tokens that increases every turn just to make the game uh, more intense as the game progresses. So each turn you will get the bullets that have been cleared by the player next to you and an extra number of bullets, four at the end of the first round, then five, then six, then seven, so the game does become pretty tricky after a while. You also have extra tiles that will give you extra benefits that you collect at the end of each round and you can use as a one-time ability in later rounds. So, but this is the general idea. Bullets will come from your bag. You will spend, you will use your personal abilities. If they apply, you will use your personal actions different from each heroine to move things around, to match patterns, to clear bullets that are then sent to other players or to the boss villain. And that's the general idea. That's how you play Bullet Heart and therefore also how you play Bullet Star. Now, as for our new our new characters, you already saw uh, Vesta Jackson, so now you can see her actions. There, she's pretty buff in that she has four hearts. She can be hit four times before she's out of the game. Other characters don't necessarily have that much survivability. Also, when you clear bullets with a pattern, you check the highest number among those bullets and you put that many bullets to the center, that means to the uh, from the center bag into the incoming that you would clear to, that is, uh, the bullets that you send to other players. So basically she gets to manipulate how many bullets are sent out depending on the number printed on them. She also has a pretty sweet ability here that allows her to clear a bullet or target an adjacent to each star bullet that was just cleared. So she really wants those star bullets. When you play cooperatively, then you can send tokens to one another. You really want to send them so those sweet, 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 sweet uh, star bullets because that is pretty much, we found her linchpin, what makes her really powerful. We have the news anchor, Yin, the intrepid reporter, and she gets five special cards that are abilities that she can use, so that's kind of her thing, so it gives her extra actions that no one else has, they're called alert, no one else has access to those, and you can spend actions to rejuvenate those special actions, so that's her thing. Nawa, very new, very different, plays completely different from everybody else because the patterns that she has, instead of just being stuff that you destroy, are things that will help her give her extra ways of manipulating the board, and then really it is the sous chef that can clear things using these patterns here. 14 balance, 9 to forever, she has no life, uh, that's not good. But when a bullet would hit her, you clear it and then she loses two action points. When she has zero action points, she loses. So basically she uses action points instead of life, which can be she may have a lot 
in a turn or very little if you need to use the thing. So the, there is a degree here of flexibility, how many action points you want to lose taking the, the you want to use, taking the risk of course of dying because of that. But those are also regenerated, which is something that other players, other, other heroines don't have. They don't get to regenerate their hearts. Then we have Rose Blanchett, the photographer, very mighty power of rotating the patterns because other people are stuck with that pattern. Vesta's pattern is always that one on the right and then those on the left, but not Rose. She can rotate her own patterns any way she wants. Very powerful. Also, some of these patterns can be so thematic. I mean, it's just patterns right but see she's the the photographer and so very often her patterns have like empty spaces around because she wants the image to look in a in a certain way look at this just you can imagine her taking um taking a picture and destroying bullets because this, these are her patterns we have Talenti, the Zatanna character of old. Clearly, she's a magician, and in particular, she seems to be a mentalist. Her magic seems to have to do with the mind. A matter of fact, she has a special section here, which is the mind, and her abilities, some abilities will allow her to take bullets and place them in the mind, which gives her more control instead of just drawing blindly. Uh, because she knows what's in the mind, when she plays them from the mind, she knows exactly what she's getting. So she has a little bit of that of that foresight there. She can also spend actions to clear bullets directly from the mind, again, giving her more, uh, more abilities there. Jane Doe, she has three special tokens that go in her bag and that activate pretty sweet abilities. Uh, the gun, the badge, and the trench coat, allowing her to draw a pattern, clear a bullet, or move a bullet to any space uh, twice. Uh, super powerful. But it's very situational because you don't know when you're gonna get those. Actually, early on, these abilities seem to be more powerful. Later, your bag has a lot of tokens, so you have fewer fewer control over these things uh, and so become more situational you can spend action to uh, put one of these special tokens back in the bag but again uh, I like the balance between uh, predictability that you have here and uh, and the randomness and then we have uh, memory perfect memory she has 20 patterns only two life, but why that? Because during setup, when you withdraw your hand, you draw your entire deck instead. So, perfect memory, huge control over all the patterns. Don't give this character to a player who suffers from analysis paralysis because they're gonna drive everybody insane. Uh, of course, you can play with a timer, which actually is recommended, in which case, sure, then the analysis paralysis player will just be crushed by the burden of choice. And that will be a life-changing experience for them. But uh, honestly, in my group, we like to play without a timer. We think they're pretty reasonable and we enjoy uh, taking our time thinking of the strategy. But again, don't give it to an analysis policy player if you don't play with the timer or use the timer and see them cry. So this, these are the new characters. Uh, each, again, also becomes a boss. I'm not going to go in detail on to what they do because actually we thought, we think the fun of the fun is to, to figure out the bosses as you play them to go there flying in the dark and, oh, yeah, no, the boss could hurt us in this and that way. That becomes fun. Of course, when you're playing competitively, you want to know what the other players' characters do. But great variety, great new uh, characters to play and explore here. Bullet Stars and Bullet Hearts are excellent games. I like both. I like the first game. I like this one equally. And I can already tell you, and you probably could already tell when you knew that everything is compatible, this game is not going to change anybody's mind about Bullet Heart. If you like that one, you're very likely to like this one. And if you didn't like that one, this one is not going to change your mind because it is the same gameplay, which I personally love, with uh, different characters and different bosses. Now, again, in general, this is an excellent game engine because it is so simple. Draw tokens and then manipulate them using your action points. I love action points because of the flexibility that they give me when it comes to creating a strategy. 
and so you have a perfect tension which I like very much between considerable randomness and considerable agency stuff is literally thrown at you as the game well it gets figuratively thrown at you as the game progresses and you choose how much of that you want to take it as it comes out of the bag how much you want to spend to manipulate things now or you want to save them for later but you're taking a risk there you're just hoping you don't draw that for red right now and of course you do so so many interesting decisions such a strong sense of tension based on such a simple idea of drawing tokens from the bag and using your action points to manipulate that and then more things emerge because all of the things being equal I want to send high numbers to my opponents uh, because that gets them in trouble a lot more than lower numbers so I'm taking that into account. Also, playing with different characters will create different situations. Playing with the timer without timer, that will be up to you. We like it without the timer and we haven't found that to create any problem. Um, but you have a game that is competitive in the competitive version, mind you, but doesn't feel all the confrontational because ultimately I'm surviving and yes, I'm trying to sneak some three and four in there more than maybe I would otherwise, but you don't see me doing the bad stuff. It goes into your bag. Maybe it's mixed together with stuff that comes from the center bag anyway. So it's not my fault. Then you have, you have a ton of green tokens there, which will get you in trouble with that column. So you have the competition without too much of a confrontation. And honestly, you're going to be so busy trying to survive that that's going to be your main your main imperative. So it feels like a multiplayer soul in terms of like... Uh, the energy around the table, but it's not. And so actually, if you have placed a lot of tokens with high numbers or specializing one colors, that's gonna be good also. So you got a puzzle, you got a competitive element uh, and, the, and the cooperative game is also really, really suspenseful and satisfying because truly it is about cooperation right there. Then yes, the cooperation, the interaction is explicit because you spend actions to send tokens to other people. To help them in different ways. It does feel like teamwork as it should be in cooperative games, really. Uh, I'm not so fond of cooperative games that are cooperative in victory conditions, but you're just playing your thing. But here it really uh, it really emphasizes the interaction and coordinating actions there. Different bosses are fun to be destroyed by, they're not easy. And again, I'm not gonna give you spoilers because I personally found that part of the fun is precisely to be to be surprised by what they do. The new characters bring great variety. They, they, they keep the game fresh. It's, again, it's fun to explore what these characters could do. Honestly, it was about which set you should go for. I don't know if you can only uh, get star or or hard because I like both very much. There are characters that I like very much in, in both sets, uh, characters that uh, I may like less, but even my least favorite characters are still very good. There's like, oh, please, I would never want to play with that character. Matter of fact, another way of playing is assign characters random, randomly and see what happens. But uh, I like the new characters. I couldn't tell you that as a family of new characters, I like these better than the original ones. Um, I like the, 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 the stuff that you can do. Jane Doe is probably one of my favorite ones. I like, uh, as, as you may have gleaned from my description, it's just fun to deal with those tokens. They're so powerful, but they may not show up at the right moment. And that is one of the great things about this game. Everything is so balanced. I haven't found any game-breaking ability. Everything is balanced with so much power. Then there is a trade-off somewhere else. There's a drawback somewhere else in terms of points, survivability, flexibility, control. There's always something that makes you pay for the good stuff that you have, which is precisely what should happen in a good game design. So Bullet Star, I like it as much as I like Bullet Heart, which is saying a lot because I like Bullet Heart a lot. Um, a game that gives you more of the same is awesome when the original same was good or very good. I like Bullet Heart, I like Bullet Star, and it's not really more of the same because, well, the general idea is the same. The new characters play differently and they're fun to, to explore and, and, and to get to know. Same with the bosses, 
fun to be beaten up by, fun to explore and to get to know. So I love Bullet Heart and I love, love, love Bullet Star also.